All right. One minus one over sine square root of x. Can we simplify that? Maybe a little bit. Maybe the simplifying will become more complicated, but hopefully we can simplify this a little bit. All right. One minus sine square root of x. If we want a common denominator, what would we do? Right? Sine square root of x over sine square root of x. Okay. So we get sine square root of x minus 1 over sine square root of x. Sine square root of x. Pythagorean identity that's very similar to that is what? So we have sine square root of x plus co cosine square root of x equals 1. So if we subtract this 1, we have sine square root of x minus 1. And if we move the cosine to the other side, it's negative cosine square root of x over sine square root of x. And negative cosine over sine is negative cotangent square root of x. Okay, so we're going to be simplifying some expressions using some trig identities here, okay? So what if we have cosine to the fourth of x minus cosine squared x all over cosecant of x? How do we simplify that bad boy? Well, we can do a little factoring here. What can we factor out of the top? Cosine square root of x. And what is cosine square root of x minus 1 equal to? Sine squared, negative sine square root of x, right? So I have cosine square root of x times negative sine square root of x all over 1 over sine of x. I have a complex fraction going on, don't I? How can I get rid of my complex fraction? Multiply by the denominator of the denominator. There's no square root on that. So multiply the top and bottom by sine of x. And in the end, I get negative cosine square root of x sine cubed of x. So, that's some of the stuff that you'll be doing today on your last few problems. So, in addition to what you were assigned earlier, just four more problems, 61 through 64 all. Okay? And that'll be it for this section on Thursday. We'll hit section 3-2 that we'll spend a good old week on or so. Maybe a little more than a week on. <laughs>